Hi, and welcome back. This is going to be a very fun episode, and we're going to go over something that is very important for software development, and especially if you're building out production applications. One common issue that a lot of people run into is how to actually get data into the application, either for testing purposes or just for when the app's ready to go live. And so there's a few different ways of doing it. You have the very tedious way, which would be doing something such as clicking a new invoice and entering every one in manually. And that would take absolutely forever if you are dealing with a lot of data. So that's really not a good way of doing it. Uh, there are other ways such as uh, creating uh, essentially just a lot of test data, automatically uploading it into the system and having uh, it go through and you have a lot of stuff you can play with, but it doesn't actually work for production environment. So when I'm building out one of these applications, what I typically like to do is actually build in a CSV uploader. And what that is, is a CSV file is something that you can create in Excel and your company may already have something like this for data and what we're going to be building out today is a new table on the site and it's going to be a company list and you can see right here we have a lot of company data where we have company name we have a manager with the company we have a status and then the payment terms which would be things that you typically have in an enterprise application and so what I'm gonna walk through is how to get this data automatically into the site and obviously if you're only dealing with you know 15 names like we have here this wouldn't take too long to enter but if we were dealing with thousands or even hundreds of thousands of names this would be a pretty tedious process and you want to have a automated way of doing it so that's what we're going to do in this episode so we'll click out of here and we'll get started so the very first thing we'll do is we'll create this in a branch and so we're gonna call this CSV dash uploader and now let's go into the application and see the first thing that we want to do uh, because we don't want to play around with our invoicing table yet because there's some more things that we're going to be building in such as the ability to add multiple line items per invoice and uh, that's going to be a more complex project that we'll do later in the course so uh, because we need a invoices table we might as well bid, build that out right now and so we're going to create a scaffold and if you remember that's fine if not just follow along and type in rails g scaffold and we're going to call this company and then we're going to say we have a name which is going to be a string we have a manager which is also going to be a string we, we can check back and see we have a status which is going to be a string and then we have terms and that is going to be an integer. And one important thing to put at the end here, because we don't want more style sheets, uh, we don't want them to override the style sheets, put dash dash no dash style sheets. Hit return. And let's see if this works. So uh, we're creating the scaffold which is going to build out a lot of different files for us from our views, controllers, models and there we go it looks like that all worked and to see how it all lined up go into your uh, application directory and then go to DB and migrate and you can see we have a few migration files just go to the bottom one and you can see that right here we have companies uh, we have let's see name manager status and terms and these are all right so we don't have any relationships in this one yet uh, we'll eventually uh, probably add some but for right now this is good so we can get out of there and then just do rake db migrate 
Okay, that worked. So that looks like it created everything we needed. And just to check, type in Rails S, let the server load up, and then we'll go check out our site. And if you want to see exactly where to find our companies, it's pretty easy. We'll open up another console here so we don't mess with the server. Make sure whenever you open a new one, uh, make sure it always change into that directory. And now we can do, we'll probably need even more room. We'll do rake routes and we'll see exactly where this URL is going to be. So rake routes, if you remember, shows us the exact path of each one of our views and it also show, shows our controllers and the functions. So uh, let's see, so we have invoices. Okay, here we go. We got companies and so in order to get companies all we're gonna have to do is go to our application slash companies and that should show us exactly what we need. So come down on here, preview, port 3000, and let this load up and go to companies. And there you go, that worked perfect. So if we want to do a test company just to make sure everything's working, we can say test company, manager is JH, status is live, terms are 30. Hit create company. There you go. And there is our uh, there's our company. And if we remember back, let's go into our views and let's just pretty them up just a little bit because I hate the traditional style without any kind of good look or feel. So if you remember back and one good thing is just open up the directories and always look at some of the past files that you created because it's really nice quick reference so if you want to see the exact style we're going to need just click on our invoices uh, dot, uh, invoices index file and you can see right here we have things like a media, a body, and then table, table hover. So we can actually just copy these items and then come up to companies, click on this index function. Let's see, on our table, replace that, and then come down below and add a couple closing divs. There we go. And let's indent this just so it looks a little bit better. Hit tab twice. There we go. This is a lot better looking. Hit save and come back to the app and refresh. And there we go. So this looks a lot better already. Okay, now that we have our new table, now it's time to actually build our importer. And so you'll see it's actually a lot easier than a lot of other languages. I've built out PHP applications where a CSV importer took a lot of work and uh, was pretty troublesome to build out. Uh, with Rails, it actually you know, it's something you can do in about five or ten minutes, so it makes it nice. So the very first thing we're going to do is we need a, a form tag. So we'll come down to the very bottom of the site and just give ourselves a little bit of room. And we'll do something like, let's see, we'll say H3 and say import companies. And then let's see, form underscore tag import companies path. And that's just letting us know that we're going to come right back to this page. We're not going to go to a different one. And we have to say multi part to true. There we go. And then we're going to actually create the form. So file field tag, which is going to let us get our file and then re-indent that. 
and then just our submit button. Submit tag, and we can say, instead of import, let's just put upload companies. And then all you have to do is end it out. Okay, so this looks like this should work. Hit save. Before we do anything, we're going to have to come up and go to config and then go down to routes. And you see that we have all of our different uh, resources here for companies. And in order to do this uploader, we just have to put a block inside of it. So we're going to say resources, companies, do, and then collection, and put that in curly brackets, and we're going to say post, which is the protocol we're going to use, and then import, which is going to be the function that we're going to call. And then come here and just end it out. So this is going to give us a route that we're going to send this to for our importer. And then from there, we just have to open up our controller. So we'll go controllers, and then this is going to be our company's controller. Okay, now we have to create a custom method here, and don't worry, it's very easy to do. Uh, just make sure you uh, just come down the bottom, but not all the way. Don't put it, don't make it a private one. Uh, come down right under destroy and do def import, and we can say company import params file, which if you remember, that's exactly what we called it. And then we'll do a redirect to, and we want to redirect to companies path, and let's see, and we want to give, let's see, a notice should work, so we'll just do notice companies added successfully and end that hit save and now we just have one last file to edit and so close that out and go down to models and we need to come to our company model you can see right now it doesn't have anything at all and so we're gonna make this a method inside and we're gonna call CSV dot for each and then file dot path headers true and all that means is that all that means is that it knows that right here we have a set of headers and it's going to ignore those which we want it to do uh, and the brackets do and then we're going to have it just iterate through each row and we'll say company dot create and give an exclamation point and we're given an exclamation point so that if it does not work you'll throw an error and then we'll say row to hash end and hit save and there is just one other thing we have to do it's a very quick thing go into your config directory application and then right below require rails all just do require csv hit save and i believe this should work so let's see i've not tested this out so this may be interesting rails s let the server get started and then we will try this out Okay, we've got port 3000, and now let's go to companies. Oh, and it didn't like that, and I know exactly why it didn't like that. I just made a dumb mistake. Just come back, and uh, in, let's see, this is going to be 
right here, we just have an error. This was not supposed, we weren't supposed to call CSV. We actually have to make this what's called a class method. So just do def self import and then give the parameter inside file and then create another end and highlight all this indent it once hit save okay let's see hit come back to the application hit refresh okay so that's working now let's try and upload this file so come here hit companies upload companies and look at that you got all of the companies uploaded and so you just if you followed along, you were able to just build out a full file uploader, a full CSV uploader, really in a matter of minutes. So great job. That's something that you will see will come in very handy, both for development, but also for your production applications. Uh, it doesn't really take too much of imagination to know that you're going to be building different applications that require a lot of data and way more than manual entry can really work for. So what this is going to allow you to do is take traditional types of data such as CSV files and uh, in the next episode we're going to work on being able to integrate Excel files and be able to take that data and to really use it. If you look through the data that you just imported it has all of the same attributes as if you just entered it in manually, which is very, very impressive. So uh, good job if you went through all that. Please let me know if you have any questions or run into any bugs as you're uh, building this out yourself, and I'll see you in the next video.